of IE testing in progress. Thank you, Joan. I forgot to remind you. Good thing you reminded yourself. <laughs> Gonna say continue. We would like to record our session today just so that everyone has this information for later. So I apologize for not remembering at that immediate, at the beginning, but not the first, probably not the last. <laughs> you got it. We got, we're going to get into the meat of it. So that's good. Um, okay. So lots of different branches that we could talk about underneath the umbrella of IET. Um, but today our topic is going to be pretty focused on gaining that common understanding. And so if you're thinking about one of those branches, what we'd like you to do is really jot that down uh, because we're going to spend some time at the end of the training collecting ideas um, and training needs from you all. Also, I know that we're going to be really tempted to go down the MSG NRS um, rabbit hole. So please, with all of your might, I want us to resist that temptation um, because there is going to be future training on that that will be happening. Um, and, you know, during that training, we'll talk about the MSGs, you'll talk about the new OCTA requirements and all of those good nuggets and pieces of information. So this is not gonna be the end all be all of IET trainings. This is just the beginning. We have much more in store for you all, okay? All right, next slide, please. So first things first, um, we are going to do an activity. I'm going to turn this piece over to our professional development guru. She doesn't know I just named her that, but I did. Um, <laughs> Our professional development guru, Joan Ford, um, for a quick activity, we want to make sure that this is interactive. We only have an hour and a half with you, um, but we want this to be engaging and you to actually get something out of it. Um, and so uh, I would like to turn this over to Joan for our quick activity. Okay, fine. Nicole, will you do me one favor, though? Um, as, um, sorry. I'm, I'm going to try to set up the breakout rooms, but if you can, um, in a second, put the link in for the page that people need to go to, that would be, that would yeah. be fabulous. Absolutely. So, um, I opened up these breakout rooms before and didn't put people in. So now it's, uh, it's asking me, uh, it's not letting me do it as easily. Why is that? Um, automatically moved. Never mind. D different way around this. I'm going to put the link in the chat in just a second. Um, wow. I have never had this one happen. Sorry, folks. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to have to assign people individually, which was not my plan. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, have you go into different breakout rooms. And the idea here is to um, define is, is to use the wording of the definition uh, um, that goes for the IET and, and to be able to put words in, <laughs> put the words in the spaces where they're supposed to go. So yeah, I've never had the breakout room issue become <laughs> so big before. Sorry. Give me one second. And there are six different breakout rooms. Please know which breakout room you're in because the page that you're on um, literally has this broken down. So basically everyone's gonna be on the same piece of paper, but if you all only go to the, um, to the paragraph of the definition that's yours, then everyone will be able to do this assignment at the same time. And that would be the goal. All right, I just saw in the comments that um, I shared the link, but we don't have access, so I'm unlocking editing access right now. You don't have it, really? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Okay. Were you able to unlock it? Um, it's, it's going right now. Okay. All right, did I assign everyone to a room? I think I assigned everyone to a room and I don't think you're alone. So um, you should be able to join your breakout rooms.
Bonnie, are you not in a breakout room? Oh, I think you're not. Nope. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Bonnie just worked with me and I did not have this issue last time. Let me just say. Yeah, me too, Joan. Yeah, I don't have a breakout. This is crazy. You don't have a breakout room, Chris? Yeah. Wow, I've never had that happen before. And Joan, I can't unlock it, so. Really? Okay, let me do this. I apologize. Oh, it's all good, it happens. Not usually. Awesome, thank you. That should have worked. Wow, I have never had that happen before. All right. I'm so, I am so sorry. You have like no Don't worry idea. about it. Do not worry about it. I think this environment has allowed folks to have a little bit more grace, you know? So it's part of it. How much time are we giving folks? Probably not long. Well, you can pull them back in whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm gonna just close all the rooms now, see if people are able to do the tab. Well. Wait, you're gonna close them? Hold on. Okay, so they're in there, they're working and we can see, that's good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. Yay. So they can access it. They're working on it. Does it tell you how many folks are in the document? You know, I can see that a number of folks are in it. Okay, cool. Um, I can't tell if everyone's in it and people may just be doing it on the side and not trying to move things. Oh, I see, but, yeah. So breakout room six is definitely moving things, but the mm -hmm. other groups may or may not be. The other groups are not, but that doesn't mean they're not working on it. Okay. That would be my my take. Yeah, I see breakout room six. You know, I may just, I'm going to pop into breakout room two super, very quickly and just sure. see, make sure that they're I did they get it? I can hear I didn't even I could hear people talking about it, but I could see people cool. struggling with it. Okay. So you know okay. I'm, if I do um end breakout rooms, I think that gives them about 30 seconds. And I and I think that's okay. They can come back and okay, you know, yeah. And we're gonna about talk it. about it. So that's totally fine. Yeah, it gives them one minute to figure it out. Perfect. And the fact that no one's coming back early means that they are working on this. Right. Trying to get it done. So Joan, it looks like the document um, was only shared with um, people with RI adult ed email addresses. 
I went in afterwards and changed that view that anyone who had the link, was that not a possibility? I, I mean, we, Nadia was in our group and she was able to, um, to do it. So we were all set, but I still don't have access to it. <laughs> Neither do I. I will make sure that, you, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay, um, but yeah. Good, I appreciate it. First of all, I appreciate knowing Kim and I will make sure people have access to it because I think it's a good exercise, especially if you're going to go back to your program and talk about it. It really <laughs> forces people to use the language, which is what we wanted to do here. Um, yeah. Because we all think, for me, it feels like you're unpacking like a college and career readiness standard, right? The, it, the language is so dense that you have to literally unpack it. Um, the confusion with the breakout rooms in with that, I, I can't even explain it, so I won't bother. <laughs> yeah, Just well, know, our, I will make sure everyone has access to this so that you can go ahead and, you know, try it another time or do it with folks. We're going to explain what it is anyway, or what the quote unquote right answer is. And I don't like to ever think there's a right answer, but since it's a we owe a definition, I guess there truly is a quote unquote right answer, right? So let me pull up the slides. I will show you what we always says is the definition. All right. And then we'll just keep going from there because, you know, it's Tuesday and the week just keeps going, right? Is it Tuesday? Yes. <laughs> okay. You should see my screen. It does feel like Thursday, though, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So here's the official definition. Um, that's the WIOA definition. So it's integrated education and training is a service approach that provides adult education in, and Nicole went in and underlined all the ands, by the way, and there's a reason for that. Adult education and literacy activities concurrently and contextually with workforce preparation activities and workforce training for a specific occupational cluster for the purpose of educational and career advancement. So that's where all those words go. Um, I know Nicole has much more to say about this, but um, I just find that this definition, again, needs to be really unpacked. And I like the idea of using all the words and trying to fit them in, because I think it helps me to understand it better. So. Nicole, I'm back to you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Joan. And thank you, everyone, for hanging in there as we worked through our technical challenges. Um, so I think that, um, as you notice, some of these pieces are highlighted or bolded, and we're going to take a, um, a, a closer look at those pieces. And one of the things that I wanted to point out, which Joan alluded to, is that there is a reason for the and. In order for your program to be considered an IET, it must contain all of these components in some fashion or another. So this is also a really good time to begin to make kind of a mental or physical list of your programs that you either consider to be an IET or a program that you want to build or expand into becoming an IET. And this list that you make, whether mentally or physically, is going to be um, important as we have further discussions later on in our training today. Um, so let's dive in and break down these bolded areas. We can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so adult education and literacy activities. The definition that WIOA gives is that it's programs, activities, and services that include adult education, literacy, workplace adult education, and literacy activities family literacy activities, English language acquisition activities, integrated English literacy and civics education, workforce preparation activities, or integrated education and training. So as we are thinking about um, the WIOA design and the intent around that legislation, really remembering, as a, as a quick reminder for those who may or may not know, that legislation was designed to help job seekers access employment, education and training and support services to succeed in the labor market and to match employers with skilled workers that they need to compete in the global economy. That's how the US Department of Labor defined the WIOA legislation and why they were doing it. And so all of these activities should be connected to some sort of workforce or adult education um, 
programming and training because the end goal is to get folks into jobs where they can contribute to the economy and take care of their families. Next slide, please. So what are workforce preparation activities and workforce training? Um, there are activities, programs, and services that are designed to help an individual acquire a combination of basic academic skills, being critical thinking skills, digital literacy skills, and self-management skills. Also thinking about competencies in using resources, finding information, working with others, understanding systems, and obtaining skills necessary for successful transition into and completion of a post-secondary education or training or employment. So I think the key piece, again, when we're thinking about the WIOA um, end goal in mind, your, your program should also have a combination of soft skills development and adult education or workforce training, depending on what your outcomes for your folks are, okay? So that's just breaking down some of that really big overarching um, language into what do those activities actually mean? What do they look like? And it needs to be both and, not either or, okay? Um, next slide, please. Okay, so I wanna take a second to pause here because that was really dense and quite a bit of information. And what I wanna ask is if someone can share an example, we'll take probably two people to share an example of a program that has all of those components in it. It can be your program or another program. Um, and so let's just hear really quickly if anybody wants to, to share what's out there. So let's just hear really quick. So I'll jump in if, if you want. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, so we run a, a bunch of IET programs. Um, I'll start with, we, do a, we actually do a digital literacy program which is online training um, where we mix uh, basic computer skills with some uh, math skills and some literacy skills as they're reading through NOSTAR assessments and stuff. Uh, and the objective is to get a job um, in an office environment or into customer service. We build resumes for them. We do job placement with them. Um, that's one program we run. Uh, and another one is a hospitality essentials training course where we do sort of safe certifications and adult literacy skills and some math skills for recipes. Um, and then we do workforce prep for cooking and or front of the housework and then try to get them a job in the um, hospitality industry. And Jason, did you mention that the certifications are serve safe? Is that what you all? Oh, serve okay. safe for the uh, hospitality. We also do serve safe for the digital literacy to um, to get, to expand the horizons for getting a job maybe beyond the office environment into the restaurant um, industry as well. Fantastic. So futuristic thinking as well. Great. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing, Jason. Those are perfect examples. Anyone else want to share what their program, their IET is doing or one that they know of that has those components that we just talked about? Um, would it like a, an ESOL for healthcare careers? So they're working on English for speakers of other languages, mm -hmm. along yep. with digital, digital literacy, soft skills, uh, um, CPR, BLS training, uh, HIPAA training. So things specific for healthcare, as well as working on language like answering phones and writing memos and things in English. Wonderful. Yep, that's perfect. Thank cool. you for that example, Bonnie. That's great. Okay, so sounds like you all are now IET professionals. You've got that definition memorized. Good job. We can now move forward into the next pieces of, of our training today. So um, let's go to the next slide, please. So now we're going to take um, a few moments to really explore some IET models um, across the U.S. And so um, this is where things are gonna get a little more lectury, quote unquote. I made that word up, I don't know if it's actually a word, but anyway, it's, it's gonna be a little bit of lecturing happening here at this portion, but hang in there with me because what I wanna share with you all 
are some other IET models that um, have been really successful and have a lot of the components and all of the necessary components and even take it a step beyond, um, in, in some cases, um, a step beyond that federal definition. Um, so we are gonna look at five different states. So buckle up, we're taking a little travel. I bet you guys didn't know we were going on a road trip today, but we are. So we're gonna start out all the way over here on the um, West Coast in Washington, travel down to California, head to the South, look at Georgia, gonna go to your uh, neighborhood in Virginia, and then we will end our trip in Indiana. All right, let's go ahead and head to Washington. Okay, so um, first up is Washington, and I'm intentionally choosing to start with Washington. Um, because as I began to kind of do my research on the different states that have IETs, IET trainings and different versions, many of them cited Washington as um, you know, really the place where they look to for the gold standard of what an IET um, can actually be. And this isn't just to toot our own horn over here in Washington, but it's really to give an example of how a model um, that's consistently proven by research for well over two decades has seen a lot of success. So the IBAS model in Washington has three core components, which you may or not be familiar with. So I'm going to go ahead and name this off for you. So we've got um, contextualization, integration, and wraparound support services. So when we're talking about contextualization, that specifically means um, contextualizing a maybe career and technical education program or sector or field to let's say the common, the College Common Core CCRS, College Common Core Readiness Standards. Um, so that's the contextualization piece of the program. And then we talk about the integration. That's where you've got the team teaching and there are many different ways to do team teaching. Um, and that's the second piece of it. The third piece when we say wraparound support, that's really where we're focusing on the retention and completion through the utilization of a coach, of a navigator um, that really provides that connection to the program for students to be successful throughout the entire length of, of their enrollment in, in our IETs here in Washington. As most of you know, IBEST um, is designed to create accelerated pathways that allow students to go further and faster in reaching the tipping point. So what is the tipping point? Many of you might ask. Um, I'm so glad you asked. The tipping point is we discovered after a longitudinal study that with one year of college and work a workforce credential, it put folks in a better position where it was really the gateway to living wages. And so that's what the tipping point data is. And that is where we try to get people to um, in an accelerated pathway because we've got the integration, because we've got the contextualization, getting folks right out into the workforce quickly so that they're able to um, contribute to the economy and, and to make money to take care of their families. Um, and so over on the right, you will see uh, the colorful little circles over there. These are the different components that we can bind. So IBEST is an acronym. We love acronyms in, in a post-secondary education. So you've got basic education plus skills training, and you get integrated basic education and skills training. Voila, you've got IBEST. Um, over on the left, you're going to see IBEST at work. And in 2012, we took the IBEST model into uncharted territory here in Washington and launched IBEST at work. Some of our first pilots with this model uh, were with the Tyson um, Manufacturing and Processing Plant over on the east side of our state. And um, really, they utilize these I best at work foundational pieces to build their internal workforce um, training programs. So it's kind of neat that we were able to be a part of Tyson's story as they built programming for themselves. And the main components for I best at work are very similar to kind of the, the parent model, um, but it typically happens on site at an employer. It's very employer driven um, to meet a specific need or a gap in training for their employees. Um, the employer um, partners with the adult education provider to do workplace related instruction. And they also provide the space to learn. 
And then you've got your instructor and that's your adult basic education instructor that provides your reading, your writing, your English language, um, whatever that need is for the employer at that time, depending on the populations and demographics they're working with. And then lastly, you've got that navigator support and they provide classroom and community support all working together um, with the student or employee at kind of the center of their um, uh, initi initiative. So we are going to head down the West Coast and we've got California up next. So next slide, please. Okay, so, um, California uh, is one of the states that I mentioned that referenced Washington and IBEST as a model um, that they uh, utilized in the development of their IETs. And so there were two different examples that they gave. The co-teaching one is where you've got those two instructors sharing a classroom, one teaching that basic skill and the other providing the technical training. The other uh, IET option that they have is alternate teaching, which I uh, found really fascinating. And that's where you've got basic skills instruction contextualized to a specific industry, but your teachers are not in the classroom at the same time, they alternate. So let me give you a couple examples of what that looks like. Um, the co-teaching they did in uh, San Diego in their continuing education um, area, and they did it with an automotive technology program. Kind of the challenge that they found with that automotive program is that students needed to have a little bit of remedial math and that's always a sticking point for students. We know that's one of the biggest challenges to get folks over that hump and even to associate degrees is, is math, right? Um, and so they didn't want to pull students out of the automotive cohort and kind of do a separate thing. They also didn't want to create a bridge program. They saw value in being able to bring students up to par, increase their skills, and um, get them at the same level as every other student uh, at the same time. And so what they did was they added to the existing three course, 900 hour core training program um, with co-teaching. Um, and again, that looks like two teachers in the classroom, one focused on adult basic education and bringing folks with lower skills up to the same level. And then the other um, making sure that it's a content instructor in automotive specifically, okay? So the alternate teaching model um, was pretty neat. And what they say about it is that IET programs that involve alternate teaching have some similarities to co-teaching, but also have one key difference. And it's how the notion of co-teaching is conceptualized. So like co-teaching, the alternate teaching model involves two teachers and both are not required to be in the classroom at the same time. And where they did this was in East Los Angeles in their skill center. And they did it with the photovoltaic program. How many folks have heard of photovoltaic? Because I had to Google that. I was like, what is a photovoltaic? Well, let me tell you, for those who don't know, um, photovoltaic programming is solar electric. And so what they found was there was, again, a gap in math skills. And so um, the solution for them was a 60 to 80 hour contextualized math course that was taught by the ABE instructor on Mondays. And then the photovoltaic course was taught by the CTE instructor um, Tuesdays through Fridays. Because what they found is that students didn't have a problem getting into the class, but because they didn't have strong math skills, they were very nervous about taking the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners um, exam that needed to be done for them to get their certificate and get into the workforce. So um, again, another model, a different way of doing an IET that doesn't necessarily have all of those components that we talked about um, in, in IBEST, but still just as effective. Okay. So next, we are going to go down south and check out, check out Georgia's Take 10 um, IET program. So Georgia, um, as you can see, has the three components that we talked about, and this is because Georgia is a um, really close partner with Washington. And so we've worked with them a lot over the years on their IET development and programming. And so they've got the contextualized instruction. So they're working through GED preparation, ESL and civics education. And then we've also got the workforce training. And so in Gwinnett County, their technical and continuing education department 
um, focuses on training in medical administrative assistant, phlebotomy, and welding. Those are kind of their focus areas of program. Um, and then third, they've got those wraparound support services. So they're helping students with job applications, resume writing, and interviewing strategies, which is exactly some of those things that I think Bonnie was talking about um, that occur in their IEP programming with the um, ESOL. So a couple of key pieces that I thought it's, it's a 10 that were important to say about their take 10 program is that 10 to 16 weeks, one of the things that I thought was really cool and unique about Georgia is that they also include 40 hours of externships for their students as um, another part of enrichment and connection to their industry. So I thought that was um, something that was different and something that might not necessarily um, occur within an IBEST model here in Washington. Um, they also enroll ESL students in their programming, um, which we do do that here as well in IBEST, and then um, help students toward completion of the GEDs um, or high school equivalency, and then also earning um, some of those industry recognized certifications. So they've got the CompTIA, phlebotomy technician, welding for manufacturing, and uh, medical administrative assistant. So that is how Georgia's Take 10 has really um, kind of tackled uh, IETs in their state. Hang in there, we're almost done. We're getting close to where we're gonna have a little bit more interaction and a lot of less Nicole talking. Um, okay, next slide, please. We are gonna head over to your neighborhood and take a look at what Virginia has going on. Um, one thing that I wanna point out um, is that Virginia is, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll talk about that next. Let's start with this, what's on the slide here. Um, so Virginia has a programming called Plugged in Virginia, and it's actually a career pathway program that prepares adults for the workforce um, training and education that they'll need to succeed in high demand and high wage careers. The thing that they've done with their programming um, is complete integration with some of that concurrent and contextualized academic and literacy workforce preparation and occupational training. So they've taken their workforce development, partnered it really well with their adult basic education, and right there in the middle is where you have them targeting um, their industries that need it the most. Um, one of the things that Virginia is also doing right now, and I can't necessarily share all of the information, is they're doing a lot of work around IETs and correction, which I find very exciting because I think that that's an area um, that could use a lot more attention as folks are re-entering um, their, their um, communities to make sure that there's a lot of work in partnership with training inside the facilities so that they actually can get jobs and um, greatly reduce recidivism. Um, and so Virginia um, is on the very brink of publishing some really great information um, about IETs and just kind of to give you a little, uh, uh, what do you call it, breadcrumb, is that um, they're developing specific categorizations for the different IET models that they offer. So um, not only are they saying there's not just one way to do an IET, but we're going to list out and, and make it easy for our providers to identify what kind of IET they're doing and then break it down even further and say what components are necessary to get the outcomes that we need based on the model and design of IET that you're choosing. So exciting stuff happening in Virginia. All right, so um, let's take our last stop on this road trip. We're going to head over to the Midwest to the state of Indiana. And um, Indiana has broken down their IETs into these kind of categories. They do adult education, enrollment, and training, um, kind of an orientation for their folks. And then they dive into the concurrent and contextualized training, adult education, and employment preparation. And then lastly, they continue on through the length of their programming with adult education and workforce development, um, again, concurrently. A couple of things that I found interesting about Indiana is um, it's a very rural state, um, high levels of poverty, and, and people are spread apart in their state. And again, it's one of those states that is it's on the Rust Belt, if you're not familiar with that, so high um, industries in manufacturing, production, things of that nature. Um, and so I think that it's similar in some ways to um, a lot of the same blue collar work that Rhode Island has. 
And one of the cool things that I thought that Indiana has done is they focus on that demographic of folks um, that were spread apart, normally working in those manufacturing industries, a lot of times have some of those lower um, literacy skills and digital literacy skills. And they concentrated it into nine IET pathways. And so some of those pathways were truck driving. They paired that with a class A CDL um, certification. They did kitchen cook, pairing that with the start certification, hospitality. They did the service based bartending. And you've got the CNC machining with the uh, NIMS lathe and mill um, certification. And then um, construction with the NCCER core curriculum. So they've done some really intentional uh, IET design, again, around those industries that they know their folks are already working in and need just to fill some of those basic skills gaps. When COVID hit, um, Indiana did a lot of work, not only to prepare their students and shift their IETs, but did a lot of work to bringing their instructors up to speed as well. That was another thing that I think was worth noting. Um, and one of the things that they did with their IET is created tech and media teams and partnered every single instructor in their state with a tech and media team, which I thought was absolutely genius um, and really provided the support needed for the adult education providers in their state working with their IET. All right. So um, next slide, please. All right. So we've taken our trip, traveled all over the United States. So, you know, this evening you can say you're really tired because you literally um, traversed the U.S. today. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of resources. And I, and I chose two states. And, and the reason being, again, Washington State with, you know, over two decades of, of research really setting kind of that standard for what an IET can be. Um, and so I provided a link here for you all for specifically the IBEST program and then another link for all of the details, research models and resources for IBEST at work as well. And then Virginia, they have a really cool resource. It's called IET Blueprint. Um, and so they've got a blueprint, which I've put here, and then also a roadmap that you all can check out. And again, because they're doing so much work in corrections, this is an area that I think um, would be worth exploring um, and, and checking out those resources um, later on if you'd like to. All right, so now it's going to be time to get some kind of feedback from you all. I know that was a lot of information. I know it was very, very fast, a lot to digest. Um, but we're going to take a second and do a quick Zoom poll. Because what I want to do is give us an opportunity to really kind of reflect again on your own IET models, what you're already doing. And then I think the Zoom poll will kind of help us identify, again, some of that great work that's already happening. And even, you know, as you're thinking to yourself, some areas where you might like, yeah, you know, that one program I think could use just this one piece, and that would make it an IEP, make it reportable, give us the support that we need to expand. So Joan, if you don't mind putting up that first poll. All right, so this should pop up. First one, does your IET focus on GED preparation, English language acquisition, civics education, or you're not necessarily working in an IET right now. Give you a couple minutes. Well, not a couple minutes, 30 seconds or so. Let's see where we're at. Okay. We're about halfway there, so we need some more vote, votes. Yep, there we go. What if our IET focus isn't on this list? Ooh, what is your IET focus? Well, Do you mind I, typing it in the chat for me? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Twelve out of twenty. Couple more, folks. If it's not on the list, feel free to type that in the chat because we want to know about it. Fantastic. Good deal. Okay. All right. So it looks like the majority of the focus is on English language acquisition. Very cool. Okay. Let's check out the next question. So. Okay. 
Okay, so does your IET contain workforce education, workforce training, or both? Maybe you need there's not a spot to say if you're not offering, so we might not all reply to this. Yep, that's good. No. Both. Very nice. About halfway there. Okay. Looks like everyone's had a chance. All right, so 100% of folks who did this poll are offering both. Fantastic. Okay, question number three. All right, does your IET include digital literacy skills training? We know this is a hot, button item right now and has been for the past, what, 15, 16 months. So I suspect that most folks are gonna say, absolutely, we're working on that. Great. Should get a couple more, only about halfway there. I know everyone can't respond if you're not in a program, but should have a few more responses. Wonderful. All right. Most folks are working on that digital literacy skills training right now, which is key. It's really good to see. Okay, next question. And this is your final question. All right. Does your IET provide wraparound support and case management? Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Got about 10 folks. Okay, great. Thank you all so much for kind of sharing the different components that your IET and, and and kind of thinking through those. Close out that poll and I'll wait for Joan to get us back in the presentation. So as we think about some of the IETs that you all have going on, I've got a list here. Nobody panic. This is not a comprehensive list of every single IET that is happening in Rhode Island. Um, the list that you all see here is uh, really just a list based off of some of the um, ride funded providers. And so at this time, what I'd like you all to do is as I kind of go through this list, if you've got an IET at your organization that's not on here, throw that in the chat. Um, and there is a reason that we're asking you to put a whole lot of stuff in the chat today. Again, that's kind of our record and our ability to go back and to provide support. Um, you know, if, if we don't see you on here and you're like, hey, I've got an IET and an IET training or opportunity for development comes up, we want to make sure that we know you're out there so that we can get that information to you. So if um, you uh, can work on putting your IET in the chat, if you don't see it here, We've got um, Community College of Rhode Island uh, doing their CNC manufacturing. That's actually their IVEST, RIVEST actually. And then you've got Rhode Island College doing the Social and Human Services Assistance Certificate. Um, and then what you'll also see here, of course, is a lot of great partnerships, which um, a good IET is going to require cross-sector partnerships. And so we've got Providence Public Library and Roger Williams University doing the Microsoft Office Specialist Certification, and then Genesis Center and CCRI with hospitality. Um, Genesis Center also working with Core Skills Partnership and hospitality, and then Progresso Latino and Rhode Island College with um, hospitality as well. 
So let's see what we've got in the chat so far. Um, got a question, so I'll pause there. So can a program be IET and not IVEST? Absolutely, yep, absolutely. So um, RIVEST is an IET model. It is not the only IET. Um, and the IET model is again defined by that federal definition that we saw kind of at the very beginning. Um, it needs to contain all three of those um, bolded pieces that, that we talked about. So um, RIBEST is not the only one, not the only way to do it. Um, lots of different ways to do it as long as it has all of the components listed in the definition. Great question. All right. Next slide, please. Okay, so we are going to do a small group activity and um, it's gonna be kind of our final activity to bring together all of this information that we went over today. We are going to be designing our very own IET um, and we're gonna be using a really simple but effective tool that I get to share with you guys today. Next slide, please. Ta-da! We've got a tool for designing an IET. It is our IET framework template, which is courtesy of Judy Mortrude, who is phenomenal, um, has written a lot of uh, papers and literature and done a lot of research in IETs um, here in the US. So if you don't know her, look her up. She's a fantastic resource. Um, and uh, she has a lot out there um, and a lot coming on um, the, the IET MSG um, new guidance. And uh, if we're lucky enough, I'm hoping that we will be able to get her as a guest um, to do some professional development for the state of Rhode Island as well. So, um, okay, simple tool, simple worksheet. Here's what we're going to do with this today. As you can see, um, you've got a model at the very top and then you've got your program name, program site, and then your target population. Those pieces I have pre-populated for you, except for the program name, because I'm going to let you all choose the program name. And uh, Joan, if you don't mind maybe making sure that this document has permission for folks to access it, um, and then... Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. But I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sharing just to make sure, sure I can potentially do that. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. Um, and actually, I think that I can go ahead and share my screen so that um, you all can kind of see, and I'll talk you through what we're going to be working on next as Joan is um, giving everybody access to the document. I mean, I can see. I can see the doc. All right. Nicole, you want everyone with the link to be able to edit it, correct? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. So on this document, you see the three different colored boxes on here. We've got workforce training objectives, workforce preparation objectives, and adult education and liter literacy objectives. We're going to break you all into three groups, and each group is going to take one of those categories. We'll assign those at the time that we assign the groups. And a couple of things to think about as you're working as a team in the group, okay? If you're in the workforce training objectives, that's that red section here, you're gonna wanna think about who your lead organization or individual or your contact is. This can be fictitious for somebody you actually know, maybe some of the other group volunteers and they say, I'm that person for workforce training, go ahead and stick my name in there. Um, and then underneath it, you're going to want to add the, the objective. So for example, that can be the CTE course standards, maybe the industry standards, what are the apprenticeship standards, um, employer on the job training, what are their requirements? Those are some of the things that are going to go in that workforce training objectives box underneath your lead organization, okay? Things that you're gonna wanna flush out in your group. If you're working in the workforce preparation objectives category, underneath your lead organization and individual, you're gonna wanna be thinking about 
the US Department, Education Department Employability Skills Navy Framework. What are the requirements for the Google Digital Skills, North Star Digital Literacy Standards, right? That's what you want to put in that preparation. What's going to prepare for folks for your industry? Um, what kind of workforce preparation do they actually need? Over in the third box, which is what we're most uh, familiar with, is that adult education and literacy objective. That's probably going to be easy for most folks. Um, instead of having to pretend that you're in a sector or industry that you're not, but we're going to use our imagination here. Um, in your adult education and literacy objectives, you're going to be wanting to think about those CCRS standards, your state-defined um, adult education standards, and then the standards necessary for completing high school or GED or that equivalent. Okay. And so you'll kind of list those things out. When we come back to the large group, we're going to tackle that purple box underneath it, where we take all of those pieces and think about a single set of learning objectives. We think about all of the kind of the nuts and bolts and get into the weeds. So we talk about, you know, the timeline and the schedule. How is this course going to be delivered? It's going to be hybrid. Are we going to go for in person or are we going to stay completely virtual? What kind of support services are going to be necessary? Um, and who's going to be the provider who's going to do those different support services if there are multiple kinds. We're going to think about the barriers of completions and maybe some solutions in that same kind of token. We're also going to be looking at how we're going to measure our outcomes. Um, that's definitely important. How are we measuring success? And then thinking about the most important thing on everybody's mind, how are we going to pay for this? So I'm going to stop sharing because I'm going to ask you all to use your emoji uh, buttons here so that I can find out what kind of program you all would like to design and you get to choose. Okay, so the first option is we can choose to do a career and technical education cabinet making um, program. We can design that or we can design um, straight out of Hogwarts a wand making um, IET. So both, I think, are equally exciting and very fun. So all in favor of the cabinet making, let me see you put your thumbs up uh, with your emoji. If you are not familiar with where to find that, at the very bottom, you'll see reactions, a little smiley face with a plus. Click on that, and you'll see a thumbs up. So if you want to do cabinet making, throw that thumbs up. OK. Woohoo, we got Bonnie for cabinet making. <laughs> Chris, Chris wants cabinet making too. Okay. And I'll give it a little time. Okay, we've got three because I think people are trying to find where that darn reactions button is. So four. Okay. Got five. Awesome. Six. Six out of 20 of y'all want cabinet making? Okay, so that means that we are making wands, people, which I personally am really excited about. <laughs> also gives you the freedom to be a little bit more creative um, and not stress so much about getting the exact, you know, workforce standards and all of those things. But use the knowledge that you already have. Um, kind of, uh, uh, again, discuss with some of the folks in your in your breakout room who have different areas of specialties. And, and you know, if you if you want to make up a certification that happens at the end of that, you're totally welcome to do so. Um, OK, so we are making uh, Hogwarts wands. Um, I will tell you in advance your student demographic. Um, and that will also be linked in the um, linked in the document, but um, I want to tell you what that is. Are you including like muggles and stuff? Because that if, would if you, need the specifics. <laughs> well, I'm leaving that to you all, you okay. know, you, you get to design, okay? So the type of IET that you're making is going to of course be an IET plus a CTE industry credential, okay? So we're going to come out with a um, Hogwarts wand making credential after they've studied um, under your program. Um, and your target populations are going to be ABE students, ELL upper level, so level five and six, 
and then people interested in the wood crafting trades, okay? And in our case, the magical wood crafting trades, okay? So that's um, already um, going to be kind of populated. I am going to add your uh, program name to it right now, and then we will open it up, put you all in breakout rooms and give you all some time to work on your categories. And uh, Joan, as we assign folks to the breakout rooms, um if we could let them know which objective or standard area that they'll be working on that would be awesome um okay i, I guess i can do that yeah i have people in five breakout rooms does that work for you so that's about four people per room three three to four people per room depending on the room sure yeah okay that totally works all right i don't want so i don't want to send them there until you're ready to send them off okay second all right, so we've got five different rooms and I think what, if, does it show you the room that you're in once you get, you pop in there? It should, it should show people what room, um, it, well, I can tell you just real quickly. Room one is Christina, Melanie, Pat, and Cheryl. Two, Jania, Jason, and Mary. Three, Bonnie, Liz, Nicole. P. Sawyer, not sure who that is, but that's what I see up here. Um, room four is Anna, Elizabeth, Kelsey, and Kim. And room five is Beatrice, Chris, Kathy, and N. D. Not sure who that is. Okay, um, Joan, I don't, I don't have access to like the an edit version of the document. I don't know if that's true for everybody. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's showing up as um, <clears throat> like a Google, not a Google, um, a Windows document. And so I yeah. don't see like the updates that Nicole just just added. So I, I don't know if we'll all be working on a shared document. Um, I opened it as a template where I click like open with Google Docs and it opened and it's editable. Um, are all five groups gonna be working on the same template? Cause that's gonna get really confusing. Yeah, like, I would suggest down I would suggest downloading it for that reason. Okay, so each group that. is gonna have to have their own copy of it. And then Are someone we supposed to be able to see what Nicole just added. You should um, be able to. Can you see that? Because I edited it in the Google Doc. Nope. Yeah, I saw on your your. I, I don't think the Google Doc was shared with us. I think it was like maybe the original Word file that was shared with us. Which, yeah, when which, you, I opened it as a Google Doc, and I can yeah, see everybody in it, and I saw doc. Nicole making the changes. I I see the Hogwarts okay. stuff in there. Me too. Cool. Yep, that's the only edit that I made. I just put right. the choice that you all just made. Okay, got it. Yep, once you open it as a Google Doc. Okay. Good deal. Okay. All right, everybody good? Okay, so I'm gonna give you your category assignment. Okay, so I hope you remember your name being called out and what group you're in. If you were in group one, you're gonna be working on the workforce training objectives. Um, that's that red category if you're in group one and two. Okay, okay? I want you working on that area. If you are in group three, um, I'd like you working on workforce preparation objectives. That's that light blue section, okay? If you're in group four and five, I would like you to work on the adult education and literacy objectives, okay? Everybody got their assignment? All right, so let me check in on our time. It is, um, let's, spend a good 10 minutes. Does that sound like enough time for you all to work through that before we bring it back to large group? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so we're gonna Nicole, if you wanna reshare that document, I shared it, but I can see some people, maybe because you created it, no idea. <laughs> just, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> yep, I will put a link right now in the, um, in the chat and then folks should be able to see it. Not sure. Technology is great when it works. If not, we figure out how to make it work. So absolutely. Gonna... I'll let you put that in and then I'll send people to the rooms. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Here we go. Bingo. All right. Ready? Ready? So grab it if you can.
Hi. Hi. Who's this? This is Pam Sawyer. I am traveling, so I'm just trying to um, listen along, so I can't really participate in group three that I am in. Okay. I'm from the Education Exchange, but I was, um, I'm away this week, so I'm just kind of uh, listening along. Okay. You know what? Do you want me to put you back in that room? Um, sure. I, I just turned my audio on so I could inform you of that, but I, okay. I feel bad that I can't participate, but um, it's a little difficult right now. Yeah, you know, life, life happens. <laughs> yes, okay. it does, but I wanted to at least hear what was going on because it's very exciting and I've, I'm enjoying it so far. So if you would like to pass that along or I'll tell them because I think I'm in the group with the uh, with the presenters. Yeah, so you are, you're in the you're, uh, room three, Nicole's in room three. So yes, okay. I'll put you All there right. and feel free to tell her or I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Pam.
<laughs> Kim, when you get a chance, check that link, check out that link again for the first piece, because I just went in and I think edited it again. Yep, it's working now. Thank you. <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> We were right in the middle of finishing up the one, the, the, the potency of the one situation. Oh. I, I saw what was going on in there and got super excited. You all are such a creative group and I so appreciate you humoring me and hopefully we can translate this into the real world too. Um, some might argue that, you know, Hogwarts is the real world, but. I Welcome think there's a market, just saying. Comic-Con <laughs> is a thing, you guys. It really wand, is. wand connectivity and elementary wand coding. I didn't know wands <laughs> for computers. This is awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Joan, would you mind pulling up and sharing the document so that we can go over it? And oh, sure. Spend, um, spend the next four minutes or so. Um, <laughs> Let me find it again. Hold on. Okay, doing a quick recap. Um, uh, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Sorry. No, you're all good. <laughs> so everyone, are you seeing it? Yeah, but it's not the one that was edited. Oh. And if you can't pull it up, I can, so. Um, I may be challenged. Oh, look at that. Is that, oh, I think there it is. Fantastic. Okay. Awesome. So let's take a look at what you all came up with. Again, targeting your ABE students, upper level ELL, and then folks who are just simply interested in woodcrafting. Um, so workforce training objectives. Does somebody want to maybe share the top three from, from one of those groups? That you thought were super important to the workforce training objective? Well, oh, one can, and two. Okay, wait, I can. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, Who's go that? for it. I could. I mean, we were doing the cabinet making one. Okay. Right? Cool. Okay. And um, so it was a lot of the same things that you already had on this template. I think as a, I don't know if they were examples or what, but you know, students need to know the type of wood that's out there that you could use, the types of tools that you would need, how to use the tools. Just a really good example of what are cabinets and what they might be called in other countries and other areas. Um, and um, the importance of accurately measuring and, um, and knowing how to do that. Um, you know, and then all the different styles of cabinets, like from the basic to the fancy and what they're used for. Um, hands-on experiences, safety protocols. Um, and I would say also probably customer service because they're dealing with people that are buying a product from, they're buying something you're selling and they want a good job and you need to be able to work with the person. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, and were you with group one or group two? Oh, group two. Okay, somebody from group one, you wanna share? maybe one or two points that you thought were most important in this category? Um, I guess I'll jump in. We talked about, yeah, needing to know what wood is good for wand construction. The, uh, we have the wand, we need to figure out what type of magic it will, it will possess and how to do that. So we had to break that down into three levels because that's quite complex. And, uh, the the safety protocols the ethical and just the equipment that's basically Wonderful. thank you melanie all right group two that was my group somebody share one or two from the workforce preparation objective oh well, group group two we already did i think you mean group three um group three yeah sorry so we uh, we have ethical use of magic because uh we took it um because it sort of overlaps. We talked about how some things overlap. Um, the basic skills of, uh, you know, job search and then um, HR literacy means like workers' rights, overtime, workplace harassment, and all those other things that uh, sort of apply to most or all jobs. Fantastic. Thank you, Bonnie. OK, 
Okay, we've got group four, adult education and literacy objectives. Sure, I can, <laughs> I can speak for that for our group. Um, so we talked about how um, participants would need basic math skills, um, particularly around geometry um, for like measuring and um, those kinds of things, uh, comprehension skills for following directions. So it could be directions that are given orally um, or, or spoken directions, um, or it could be reading like a manual um, for how to use equipment or um, how to uh, do a specific design. Um, expressing problems and concerns. So for example, if there are any on the job injuries related to equipment, um, uh, I guess I'm thinking now that also it could include um, like filling out paperwork um, related to those things. Um, oral communication skills, um, if uh, workers are gonna be training um, other workers. Um, and then, yeah, I'll let the other group share because I think the rest is from the other group. Thank you so much. All right, and group five. So we we just, we, we took everything a little more seriously in terms of converting to magic wand format. I like it, um, that was the intent. Yeah, so, you know, foundations of magic, like he probably would be doing some basic understanding of basic concepts, uh, mastery of tier two vocabulary pertaining to spellcasting and materials for our ELL students and also just ABE, it benefits them. Explicit vocabulary instruction is always great. And if it's contextualized, it's even better. Um, and then troubleshooting wand connectivity and elementary wand coding are kind of like, you know, your, uh, your uh, digital literacy for the spell world. Phenomenal. Thank you all so very much. So we're getting right to the end. We're not going to have time to kind of dig down into those purple portions. But what my hope is, is that at this introduction, you can see how this can give you a start as you're identifying all of the necessary components, all of the key players, and what kind of integration and partnership and collaboration has to happen throughout the development of an IET. Um, and so, you know, you will have access to, to the presentation and to be able to kind of play around with this tool. And I'm hopeful that you will find it useful in experimenting. And maybe you don't use all of the pieces in it, but maybe use some of them um, that apply to um, how you're designing and building or even examining your current IETs to think about where you might um, improve uh, or fill gaps that are there. Okay, so Joan, if you don't mind going to our last couple of slides, um, this is where I would like to kind of collect some of those branches that I talked about earlier. If there were areas where you're like, man, I wish we would have really kind of dove in here or talked a little bit more about this area. If you don't mind throwing those in the chat um, at this time. Um, and then um, I want to leave the last couple of minutes for either any thoughts um, or questions that you all may have. You can throw your little hand emoji up um, if you want to speak out loud, you can put it in the chat. And if I'm not able to get to it um, verbally today, I will be following up with those chat questions um, offline via email to the individuals who submitted them. Um, next slide, please. All right, and I'm not sure if y'all are putting anything in the chat. I know that there was one question um, about under the workforce training objectives, if an individual had to obtain an industry recognized certification for an IET, or if um, an IET could be offered as an on-ramp to career pathway that leads to an industry recognized certification. Um, I do wanna say that the latter um, is definitely eligible for a program to be considered an IET. It does not need to include a certification that's not listed in that federal definition, um, but it does need to um, lead to a career pathway or an education training program or um, an industry recognized certification. So that's the idea behind, um, behind development. Great question. All right, any last kind of closing thoughts? I always wanna make sure to respect you all's time. I wanna thank you again um, for uh, attending today's training and session. Um, I actually really enjoyed it, had a lot of fun. 
Um, and, and I hope that this was useful to you as well. Um, my email is here. If you have questions after the fact, feel free to send me an email or give me a call or text. Um, all forms of communication are welcome for me. So um, we don't we, have any, oh, go ahead. No, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just gonna say, we are gonna send out just an evaluation, um, mainly so we can get some feedback. And also on that, if you know that there are things about IETs that you wanna hear more about as we're planning for next year, that'd be an ideal place to put them. Cause then they're, you know, somewhere I know I'm gonna get back to. So, you know, the purpose of those evaluations is really just to get feedback to move forward with what we do next. So, you know, please fill it out, take you two minutes, but I'll try to get that out to you today actually. And Nicole, thank you. I appreciate all your time in putting, in, in putting this together. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for your help and assistance, Joan. All right, folks, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you again. Um, feel free to hit me up whenever um, I'm available. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you all. You're welcome. Thank you.